Roughly two years ago, I decided to build a camera crane. I was tired of hauling my tripod around and just the constant running into it and just trying to fumble around my little tiny shop with getting footage of what I was building. So I went online and found a couple camera crane designs and uh, came up with one that was relatively simple. I've seen a few guys build them out of wood and it looks fairly simple and it is. It's not a complex uh, apparatus whatsoever, but my issue was that it kept wanting to vibrate or shake and it just couldn't have it in the footage. I had to wait a long time before it would stop shaking. So here's what I came up with and I added some tension wires to try to improve it and it still didn't work. And I did use it for a while as I'll show you some footage here. It did work for what I was trying to do with it, but just again, the camera shake got annoying and I could see it while I was editing the videos. Here I'm testing it after I added some cabling to try to stiffen it and added some more supports, but as you can see, it still shakes a little and it's very uh, unnerving when you're trying to edit videos as you can see the camera shake. Here's the final version of it. As you can see, I used it for a number of years and you'll probably recognize some of the shots of the parts that I made, um, but also at the same time, I added a little screen because I could not see my camera when it was at an odd angle. And if I was out of focus, there was just no way to detect it until I was actually able to see the screen. And once you've machined a part, it's too late, you'd have to machine another one. So I just uh, thought a $30 item was way better than not being able to see the screen. I went on Google to start searching for different crane ideas. It's amazing what's out there. There's so much to choose from and so many different thinkers, so many different builders and so many YouTube creators that they all have their different opinions. I found one that really seemed uh, promising and here it is. It's called the Marble Orbit, created by Josh Yo, a YouTube creator called, and he runs a channel called Make Art Now. He spent a few years developing this and has got a very successful Kickstarter program right now for it. I'm sure for the guys out there that are doing marketing videos and product videos, it's a great tool to have. But for myself, I can't justify the cost and also I need something that's a little more versatile for my little shop area that I can use in multiple locations. I spent some time looking up at the ceiling in my garage. You know, with the garage door there, it creates another obstacle and uh, being able to swing from my mill to the lathe, it creates another obstacle. So how do I make something that can fit in between all those different areas. I had the idea of using black pipe because there's so many different kinds of fittings that something might be able to be created to mimic what the orbit does and be able to pivot around a point. So that's what I did. I made a trip to the local hardware store and bought a few pieces of black pipe and this is uh, my progression of the parts. One of the first things I did was to create a, a pivot point between the two pipes just to see how much weight I could actually put on it and unfortunately just with a quarter inch bolt you cannot put a whole lot of weight on it. Using two different sized pipes, I created a telescopic arm and used a wooden clamping device for a temporary solution. And then I mounted it to the ceiling away from everything just to see how it would work and just to get an idea of what else I needed to do. The next thing I needed was some kind of track so I could move the whole telescopic apparatus back and forth. So I came up with a simple track of using angle iron, that's something I had on hand, and welding it together. Now that I had a track made up, I would need some kind of wheels to roll the apparatus back and forth. So here I am using a hole saw to cut it from some plastic. Keeping the design very simple, just using a bolt for the wheels to spin on. I used an old file that I ground to a 45 degree to cut a channel into each roller to guide on the track. I created a small carriage to mount the flange on so it could travel back and forth. It seems to slide okay, but we'll see what happens once there's some weight on it. I mounted the unit on the ceiling and then added the pipes on the bottom and extended the boom and also added the existing camera apparatus that I had to hold the camera just to see how things went and I added a counterweight on the far end just to level things out. My step ladder has a rather unique uh, clamping device that allows the ladder to be set at different angles, so I thought I'd incorporate that into my crane.
you haven't used your mill in a while, you might want to check your vise to make sure it's still square. I hadn't used it in a while and started squaring up the blocks and found out very quickly that I was way out of square. I started creating the two swivel blocks using aluminum as I wanted something very strong to ensure that the camera would be solid mounted and that there would be no further shaking. I don't own a turntable or indexing head or any type of device that I can use to create radii on parts, so I used a pin and rotated it about and fed it into the cutter slowly. Be very careful when using this operation as it's very easy for the cutter to bite into the material. Now that I have a pivot point for each block, I can create different holes in different locations and using 0, 90 and I think 45 as well for the locking mechanism to be able to adjust it to these different angles. In the back side of each swivel block I had to create a hole large enough for the outside diameter of the black pipe. So I made a very simple boring bar because I do not have a boring head. It seemed to work. I had to tap the cutter a little each time just to get a better cut and I eventually ended up working and got a nice slip fit. Here's the first swivel that I use, and then the second one with all the different hole locations. One block has holes at every 45 degrees in a circle, and the other one I created uh, holes at 8, 0, and 90 degrees, and also created some at 22 degrees, which allows me many different offset angles. On the opposite end of the crane, I wanted to be able to adjust the weights at different heights as well and different inclines to give it more pressure if needed. So I've created the same blocks, but this time using nylon. When I created the aluminum swivel blocks, I jumped the gun and cut off the material that I was going to use to hold in the lathe to bore the hole. This time around I wanted to ensure I could bore the hole, so that is what I did first.
for the second block, I drilled many different holes at 0, 90 degrees, 45, and then also 22 and a half as close as I could at various different angles. So I have multiple choices of setting the weights. I was looking for different options to mount the camera to the crane. A while back I had purchased a track slider for a camera mount for $50 on a used website and you know it works really well so I just implemented that instead. The camera mount itself is a Defato T3. I'll put a link in the description later for you to review. The slider itself I have no idea where it came from. It has no identifiers on it whatsoever. But it does lead to many different options as allows me to mount in any direction. Another item I had to implement was some way of viewing the monitor, so I came up with a very simple wooden clamp. It clamps onto the pipe at any given area and also be able to adjust it to any angle that I need. My focus now turned to replacing the wooden clamp with a nylon one in its place. In order to be able to bore the 1 and 5 16 hole for the larger black pipe, I had an old boring bar that I made years ago and I had to lay down the back end of it for 7 8 so I could fit it into my mill and then use an old tap that I ground a cutting edge onto to bore the hole. You can hear on the spindle that the tool was starting to plug, there was a little bit too much material left, so I went back with an end mill and cleaned it up a little bit better and then tried once again. It is a very crude boring bar, but it worked. I just basically loosened the cutter a little bit, tapped it, and tightened it again, and uh, just took off a few more thousandths of an inch until I got the fit that I required.
With the two clamping blocks completed, I'd have transfer the holes from the lower block to the upper block and also then tap the upper block. Time to plug in the camera and see how this thing works. Seems to work okay. Here's a few shots of me using it for my last video on the flame meter engine part 7. This is the current state of my sky crane. Another thing I did was added a 12 volt power supply for the monitor. The swivel locking clamp I built is a little cumbersome, but it works. It can hold a lot of weight. I wish I could have bought the serrated type as shown here, but I just do not have the funds at the moment. The swivel locking clamp that I built will not allow for infinite angles to be set, but I can set enough angles for my purposes. When adding weight to the sky crane on one end, you have to add a counterweight on the opposite end. So I made up some weights. Another feature that I incorporated was to be able to loosen the clamp and raise and lower the entire boom because it's telescopic. There is a plug at the end to keep it from falling through should it ever come loose. Due to each pipe having its own clamp area, the upper one I chose to use that one to be able to swivel. I can adjust the tension just by loosening or tightening the bolt. For the monitor, I added one more piece of wood to create another joint so I could level it out as I'm viewing it. This video wasn't intended to be an instructional video, just highlight what I did to create my own crane. I have about $60 in materials, $20 in bolts and nuts, and the rest of it was labor. So it's not an expensive project, only about $80 into it total. So I hope it inspires someone else to be able to create their own crane. This project took a few months for myself, mostly because I was caring for my wife who was released from the hospital back in March. In 2018, we found out she had cancer, she had surgery, she did well with it, but now last year we found out she's terminal cancer. And so they've been dealing with a lot of the issues related to the medication she's been taking. She's currently in the hospital and should be released in a week or two. That is the hope anyway. And uh, so that's what limits myself to any projects currently. Thanks to the new subscribers and to the viewers that have been viewing for a while. I appreciate it. I hope to make some more videos coming in the near future. And just thank you again for tuning in.